email, got an invite to a website I don't know. Looked like Google Buzz at first sight, but my friend said that's a no. Why did we need another social network? Doesn't Facebook work all right? A new thing for me to learn. This could take all night. Damn it. What is this Google Plus? I don't need Google Plus. There's another plus one and another plus one. What is this Google Plus? Hey, what's this red thing here? Go away, Google Plus. They want me to put my friends in circles, but circles are for squares. Every day is like Sophie's choice. Trying to choose which ring goes where. But no Kellen, Turks, my friends can't get in without invites. And when I drunkenly post that he's cute, I can edit it later than night. Whoa. I kind of like Google+. Plus. Can't believe I'm on Google+. Plus. Oh, another hangout and another hangout. I dig my Google+. Plus. All my high school friends can't turn my Google Plus. Friends at me without me adding them. That feature's really nice. Randos, uglies, my popular, and all these friends I've never liked. No one knows my circle name, so even good friends get handpicked. Did you make it into my main beat, or are you in my circle of pricks? Whoa, yeah, I'm in love with Google Plus. I'm judgmental on Google Plus. Here's another douchebag and another loser that didn't make my Google Plus. Hey, now I'm a fascist pig. Thank you, Google Plus. All right, so the reason why I showed that video is because that's how we most most of us feel about Google Plus, right? Like, why? Why do we need to do this? What are we gonna do? And most of us stop at that point. Just don't. Just give it up. You get these alerts. You do all these things and. You just don't use Google Plus after you signed up. So even the stats say that it's an active network. A lot of us aren't using it. I actually have been using it quite a bit lately for, for many reasons. And uh, I've found that it's actually very good. So what I want to do is I'm going to talk about um, what we can do to measure Google Plus in order to determine whether we're successful with using the platform, as well as uh, more than anything, just to give you some ideas as to how you can measure whether you're doing a good job or not. With, with the network, so here we go. This is the knowledge is all contained. This is you at the end of the night with all these presentations. You're gonna learn a lot about the platform. Anybody recognize that? Like the old speaker commercial? Yeah. All right, so since I wasted time on that video, we have 13 minutes to learn. Here's what you're gonna get. You're gonna get 14 activities you can measure on Google+, 26 metrics that you can look at, 10 KPIs, things you can use to judge your own success and 31 resources at the bottom of these posts. So that's what you can get out of this. The presentation's gonna be available for download, so I wouldn't expect that you need to write everything down. You can actually download this and play around and click on the links, watch the video several times if you want to, and see what happens next, <laughs> whatever. So, 10 things we're gonna talk about that you can measure. One is circles. Does anybody know what a circle is? Sort of saw in the video James talked about a little bit. It's how you classify the people that are um, communicating with you on Google+. It's good to be in a lot of circles yourself. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's good. Um, you know, you don't necessarily need to put other people in circles, but you want to be in circles yourself. Now, metrics that we want to look at in order to determine whether we're successful with having been circled is how many people have you in circles. Um, the page rank of your Google Plus page. Does anybody know what page rank is? I'm sure SEOs know. One of the theories behind Google Plus and the reason why it's so successful for SEO is that each Google Plus profile page carries Google page rank. And that's important because if, you're, if your page has a high page rank and then you actually link to your content or to somebody else's content, there's an opportunity for that content to rank well in search engines. Now that's actually the reason why I'm up here right now is because I did a study on, on this and I proved out that you can actually rank for keywords with no other promotion at all, just a single plus one on Google Plus, and you can actually rank really well for, for keywords. Um, so it's really important, and that's the metric you want to look at, is how many circles are you in? And the KPI for all the people here is that you should be aiming, and, and some people are already well above and beyond this, that's fine, but you should be aiming to be in at least a thousand circles by, the, you know, by a certain period of time, maybe by the end of this year, and then that means that you've actually arrived, or you've gotten to a point where you've set a goal for yourself as being engaged with Google Plus, and then getting to that point. Now, you could be, you might be at 10,000 right now, that's fine, but if you're just getting started in Google Plus, try to get, at some point, upwards to 1,000 people who have added you to a circle. 
post-engagement, that's the next thing I want to talk about for being successful with Google+. This is a, just an example. Um, I don't know if anybody knows, Rand, knows who Rand Fishkin is, but every time you post something on Google+, it usually does pretty well. It gets a lot of comments, a lot of different things. This doesn't seem like much. He's just saying, which beard picture should I have out there? Well, guess what? You got 36 people who gave it a plus one, uh, four people who reshared it, means that they shared it with their friends, and then 99 people who commented on it. That's a lot of engagement with Google+. Now, the more that somebody engages with this post, the more that the shares happen and things like that, the better the chances are of this thing ranking in search engines, the better the chances are that the next time you post something is gonna show up in the results, or it's gonna show up on somebody's stream, stream. All kinds of benefits happen when people start to engage with your Google Plus posts. So for you, what should you be looking at to see if you did a good job or not? The number of plus ones, pretty obvious. The number of shares, which is that next one the number of comments, and the total number of engagements. And if you're setting a goal for yourself with your posts, you should be setting a goal to say that you want five actions of any sort to happen on the posts that you have out there. I personally, some, sometimes I do a post and I have zero reaction at all. It's just tumbleweeds, right? And actually that's most of my posts on Google Plus, I'm not gonna lie, most of the stuff I post out there, nobody comments on or plus ones. Then again, you hit, sometimes you hit the mark or you have certain things that you weren't expecting and it does really well. Sometimes you can get things that have 100 people to do with some kind of plus one. So setting a goal for yourself of saying five on average means you can have some duds and you can have some, some winners and you'll average it out over time. Next thing we're gonna talk about is finding ripples. Anybody know what a ripple is? Or has anybody seen this before? All right, this is actually, when, when Google Plus was first released, I would say this is the killer feature that a lot of marketers are really coveting after. And that is that you can actually see when you have a post that is shared publicly, you can actually see for that individual page on your website, you can see all the people on the internet who shared it. Now this is one of the posts that I put out there and I had 367 people share it publicly. And it turns out that it was actually just two or three different influencers that represented a lot of those different shares. It's really nice because if I'm starting to say, well, how do I, how do I get success the next time or how do I get more people to share my stuff? I can actually start to concentrate on these few people who are the ones who have influential network, networks rather than having to try to focus on everybody. So if I'm doing outreach to somebody when I put some, a new post out there, or if I'm just trying to do whatever, this is the right, this is the right place to look. So here's an example of, of how they commented and what they put out there. From a uh, metrics perspective, you're gonna wanna look at the total public shares. And then for yourself to have a goal, try to create something that actually gets a ripple. Doesn't sound like much, but you'd be surprised when I said that a lot of my posts don't actually get anybody to interact with them at all. Those are not creating ripples. You wanna create something that has enough data that it actually makes sense to view a ripple. Otherwise, it's not really gonna do you a lot of good. So if you're looking to set yourself a key performance indicator, it's that you actually created one. Total plus ones for your page. Now we're starting to get to things that are actually happening off of Google Plus and on your website itself. One of the key metrics that I look at is how many plus ones did I get for a page or a post on my website? So, what's your key performance indicator? The count of number of plus ones for a page. Um, and then you want to get, on average, the number of 10 people or more to give you a plus one on your page. And actually, the comment I wanted to make on this is that not only, if, if this, is, this is a post that I did, it had 378 plus ones on Google Plus. Think about the signal that that is sending to Google that this is, important piece of, this is an important piece of content. If 370 people or whatever it is are linking to this thing and they're saying, hey, I vote for this, you're sending a very strong signal to Google that this is a very important piece of content. What is Google, Google gonna do when they know that? They're gonna rank it more highly in their search engine, right? Because it's, cause they're telling you, hey, Google, we're vouching for this content, it's really good. They're also going to make it so that it shows up more often on, on people's walls in Google+. In addition to that, the other thing you can, you can benefit from is that it gives this like herd mentality to people who view your page. And if they see that there's hundreds of people who are liking this, they're probably more likely to plus one of themselves. How many times have you gone to a website and seen a blog post and there's nothing? Like it's like all these social buttons and nobody ever clicked on them. A lot of times you don't want to be the first one to, you know, you don't want to be the one to vouch for this if you're not sure. Well, when people come to these things, the, just sort of perpetuates and people start to plus one these things more and more as they see that other people are, are vouching for it as well. <laughs> so try to start with 10 and then 10 could easily become 20 and so on and so forth. My distribution is not, it's, it's more like five and then 500 as opposed to being 10 every time. So 
It doesn't always have to be perfect. Just look at the average number of people who are sharing these things and giving you plus <coughs> ones and try to try to set a goal for yourself and then beat it after that. All right, another thing on your page, James talked about it a little bit. It's the number of people who follow you for your business page. <coughs> now you might want to call it, you can call it a brand page, whatever. I think the term in Google Plus itself is a business page. Um, the pages that have a lot of people following them, this is the Google Analytics page, they have over one million people who are following them. And they're actually, when they follow, that means that when Google Plus, or when Google Analytics posts on Google Plus, a lot of people are actually seeing their updates immediately right on the network. Um, what you want to do is you want to pay attention to the total number of followers you have because that's giving you credibility. And I would put the key performance indicator at being somewhere north of a thousand people following your page as a good sign that you're successful. Now, this is the one where I'm still far behind. My brand pages have you know usually around 100 people who have who have given it a plus one. Um, the reason why you want to get to a thousand or five thousand or even higher is that once you get to a certain point, Google's going to automatically suggest your page as the page to follow. And when you're an automatically suggested, you know, when you're an automatic suggestion, you don't even have to do a lot of work, and then people are going to start to follow you because Google's doing the work for you. So you need to invest in getting to a certain point, and then it sort of perpetuates itself after that point. So let's try to get to a thousand. I know it's not easy, and I haven't done it myself, but that's a goal that I'm going to try to set and try to get to by the end of this year. Thanks for setting the bar Yeah. <laughs> um, originally, I was going to talk a lot about authorship. I unfortunately only have a little bit of time to talk about it now. But one of the things you can do for measuring your success is, has anybody enabled authorship on their blog or know what that means? Actually, in Jane's presentation, there's a picture. I, I've been writing about Google authorship quite a bit, and it's been beneficial to, to my website. And one of the things that I get as an author is that I get stats in Google Webmaster Tools about how my content is performing. And they've recognized 700 things that I've written, and in one month I had 6 million impressions in the search results which is pretty cool. And these stats allow me to tell, tell that. And then 35,000 of them click through the various websites that I run. So that's pretty, it's pretty cool to see that. And uh, it's, it's a nice way to know if you're writing things well or if you need to, to work harder on what you're doing. So what do you look at from a metrics perspective? You look at the number, total number of search impressions, um, the click-throughs of your searches. For individual posts, you can look at the click-through rate. The big thing is that some of my posts have a 0% click-through rate. So I'll show up in the search results, but zero out of 100 people on average are actually clicking through. But that means I may need to improve my description. It, might mean, it means a million things that I need to do better on those posts. Some of them actually get a 10 to 15% click-through rate. I can actually look at those, see which ones are doing the best, and then try to mimic those in the next time I post something. Individual posts, um, the average position. So are you showing up in position one where you're getting a lot of clicks, or are you showing up in position 10 on average? And a KPI for anybody here is, if you are an author, try to get at least 500 clicks from search results from something you wrote over a 30-day period. Now this sounds might sound tough to people, but if you write a single, you know, if you write a single post that, that hits well and gets a lot of search traffic, you'll actually get over 500 just from that one post alone. So it doesn't mean that you need to write hundreds and hundreds of articles in order to achieve this goal, but it is a goal that you should set for yourself. Social Data Hub, has anybody heard of this? Okay, it's an initiative between Google and several other social networks where they actually take all their network data and they share a lot of information between each other. Well, the cool thing is that if somebody's a Data Hub partner, which is all these little logos up there, their data gets syndicated into Google Analytics. You can actually see anybody on any one of those social networks that talks about your website will all show up in one spot. You can get thousands, you know, hundreds to thousands of people talking about you all in one single consolidated space. And what I use this for is it actually helps me discover people talking about my website that didn't mention me in the post. So it could be that somebody's flaming me on Google Plus or on another network, and I can actually see it in here all through this social data hub. So it's a good discovery tool to find out what's being said about you, um, actually similar to the ripples. Uh, you can see what people are saying about you without specifically mentioning you. And I've actually used this in order to go to those blogs into those places and make comments and sort of set the record straight or say, yeah, you got it right. So what should you be doing there? Um, you can look at the total number of conversations being talked about you and also the total number of events that are happening on these networks. And a KPI is um, try to make it so that there's 10 conversations happening on any one of these networks about your website per month. 
I'm getting, getting close. Google Analytics social media reports, anybody use these? All right, it's, it's sort of like uh, the parents of the section we just talked about. I think it's underutilized quite a bit, um, but, but you can learn a lot about yourself and about your, your website and about what you're doing for social media if you look at these reports. It tells you all kinds of different things that are happening, whether somebody uses a plus one button or adds to a circle or shares. Um, it's, it's really how they interact with the buttons on your website, as well as some of the traffic that's coming in through social media. And then when you, when you do have this properly coded, you get some cool little social value graphs and some understanding of where social is playing in your, own, in your entire conversion funnel. That's pretty nice to see. Some metrics you want to look at. Um, conversions from your Google Plus traffic, top social networks that are driving traffic, and then the interactions with your social media buttons. And what I would say a KPI is just to get a certain number of visitors per month from the Google Plus network. Say that it's 100, 100 people coming to your site from Google Plus is a good sign that you're doing this right. Another thing is just visitors from Google Plus. This is not something that only, that you can do this in any web analytics tool. It's going to be referring um, traffic from plus.google.com. You can use it in Google Analytics or, or Amateur, any one of those different tools. Um, things you want to look at, actually this is just like standard web analytics. You're going to want to look at how many people um, how many pages are people viewing? What, how much time are they spending on your page? What's your conversion rate? What's your bounce rate? And then the last thing that's probably the most important to us is trying to figure out how much revenue we're, we're generating through Google+. So when we look at a KPI, I would say one, one thing that we can do that's fairly simple is to look at our traffic coming from Google+, and to try to increase our conversion rate by 10%. Now 10% might seem like a lot, but it's really if you're at a 1% conversion rate, which a lot of our social media traffic is at 1% or even lower for some cases, it's saying bring it up to 1.1% or something like that. It's a small win, and if you can prove that you can actually make those improvements, then the next time you, you buy into social media, you might get either a bigger budget or just more opportunity to, to earn revenue for your company. Last one, Google Plus blog comments. Um, I actually switched over on one of my blogs to using Google Plus as my blog, or the comment system on my blog, as opposed to using the native comments within WordPress and, and something called Discus. And when I switched over, I wanted to say, is the, what is the average number of comments on my blog before using that system? What's the average number of comments afterwards? And is there more engagement happening as a result of using Google Plus comments than I had by using a previous system? In my case, I actually, you know, I set the goal of saying, if I can get double the engagement by using Google Plus over these other systems, I'm going to stick with it. And I ran it for two weeks, and I found that I got less engagement using the Google Plus comments than I did using the other comment system. And there's a few flaws, or a few uh, things that I didn't like <clears throat> about Google Plus comments that I ended up switching back because I didn't hit my KPI, and I didn't, you know, the experiment didn't work in my mind. So. Not all these things are going to work exactly how you want it to. That's where we learn. That's how we actually you know, set up our next, next set of goals and our next set of experiments. These are some things that you can look at, you can take away and start, start to use. I'm actually turning this, I, I wrote a blog post about this. It's like 4,500 words. Um, I'm going to be publishing it pretty soon. So if you want to like read all this stuff and take some time to marinate on it, you can look at that post when it comes out. It'll be coming out soon. Um, and then. This is what you're going to do right now, right? Because you have all this knowledge. You go and show it to everybody at work tomorrow. That's me. And uh, I'm teaching Google Analytics classes and um, a WordPress class in September and October. So if you want to learn, we have a 20% discount. And then search August, and it's demandquest.com is the, the place where I teach. So. Sure. <laughs> Thank you.